Hi all, this is Subbu. Welcome to Azure SQL Champ YouTube channel. Uh, this is our 12th session in, in, in the uh, SQL Server L1 DBA uh, video series. During this session, we will talk about more about what kind of uh, trace flags we will use uh, in SQL Server and how, how the trace flag will, will play an important role and what are the most frequent trace flags we, we will use. That's what our main agenda. So if you want to watch my previous session, go to go to uh, Azure SQL Champ uh, and go to the playlist where you can find the playlist name called SQL Server L1 DBA Task Series, where you can get all our my previous. Okay. So as part of today, we will concentrate more on the trace flags. So basically, uh, trace flags uh, in in the SQL Server we will use if you wanted to change some behavior, either it can be uh, server characteristics or, or it can be particular behavior. If you wanted to, if you wanted to uh, change, so we will use the trace flag. So for example, if you wanted to get some information, so like uh, writing in information in the SQL log or identifying information related to the dead logs, okay, changing the behavior of the TAMDB to improve the TAMDB contention performance. Okay, so we used to uh, we used to uh, run the trace files. So there are a lot of trace files which Microsoft has been provided. So when you go to, I will attach this uh, URL in our YouTube channel you, uh, description. Under the description, you can go and watch. There are n number of uh, trace files which Microsoft released. So this all the trace files, couple of trace files which are more important on our day-to-day -day work like uh, 1322, 1204, 1317, 3118, uh, 32, uh, 3226. Couple of trace files are so important that we are going to highlight couple of things. Okay, but going forward being, being our learning phase, we need to work with uh, some of the trace files in case you, you you if you wanted to enable something you wanted to get more interaction okay try to go and read the microsoft blog where you will get a, a clear description about what is the trace file if you enable the trace, trace file what will happen all that information we can track with the help of msdn block so So basically, traces can be enabled at query level, where you can pass the query hints. Traces can be enabled at the session level, and traces can be enabled at the global level. So query level and session level, global level, we can enable by using DBCC trace on, and uh, you can you can turn it on the uh, any traces, whatever trace you want, in respect to of what what what. What is your uh, action? Why you are enabling this trace file? <laughs> For that purpose, we will enable the trace file with the help of DBCC trace on. Using DBCC trace on, we can enable the traces. So here we will pass the two parameters. One is zero. Zero is nothing but session level. Means once you close the session, automatically the trace will be turn it off. <laughs> automatically the trace will be turn it off. So if you wanted to, even if we close the session, even if you wanted to enable the trace, we need to enable with the help of hyphen one is nothing but global trace. Is nothing but global trace. Once we enable this trace, okay, if you see the trace status, okay, we get to know uh, what is the trace files are enabled in this instance, along with what is the status and whether it is a session level trace or global level trace. System level trace or global level trace. Okay, so this will help you a lot. Okay, this will help you a lot whenever you are working with the traces. So to enable either global level or session level means whenever you, you enable the traces with the trace on and if you restart the SQL by default, whatever the traces you enable, that all will be disabled automatically. Again, you need to re-enable. So if you don't want to, uh, even if you restart the SQL Server, if you don't want to turn it off, then you need to enable the traces from the Configuration Manager. From the SQL Server Configuration Manager, at Startup Parameter, you can enable the traces. Even you, whenever even we restart, even the trace will be enabled. So just we need to go to the SQL services hyphen T nine zero two for example. Okay, 
So, but whenever we are enabling the trace set at SQL Server parameter level, startup parameter level, we need downtime because we need to restart the SQL services. Even you restart, server got restarted, these traces will be turned on. Okay, so when you enable at the st startup parameter, so we can enable the traces at session level. Okay, by the parameter called zero. And if we can enable the session traces at the global level by enabling hyphen one, and we can also enable that the query level by passing the query hints. By passing the query hints, we can enable the traces at the query level. So when you specially go to the uh, uh, traces, so how it will place in our day-to-day -day work means, so each trace having some unique feature like 3608, 902, 1322, 1377, 1388, okay? So couple of trace files which are so important that we need to know whenever we are working specially with the traces. So for example, 3117, specially 3117, 3118 will work on the TempDB okay to improve the performance to reduce the temp db contention like 3117 if you enable 3117 okay if you enable 3117 so whatever the data files being configured for temp db it will equally grow means whatever the performance you are so whatever the transactions you are performing that will equally grow whenever you enable the 3117 so all the data files will distribute the data equally and all the data files will grow equally when you enable 3117 to reduce the TAMDB contention. If you enable 3118, so basically when you are creating a, uh, creating it temporary tables, global temporary tables, local temporary tables in the TAMDB, by default in the TAMDB, it will create the mixed extents. So I don't want to create the mixed extents. I wanted to create the uniform extents to improve the performance. So how we can tell to SQL Server miss by enabling 3117 trace file, 3118 trace file, sorry. Oh, that is very important, 3187 trace file, which this true trace file by default enabled from SQL Server 2016. So before SQL Server 2016, if you want to improve the TAMDP performance, we need to enable these two trace file before SQL Server 2016. From SQL Server 2016, by default, these two trace files are inbuilt. And like same, so we have one more trace file called 3226. Basically, whenever we are performing backups, so usually whatever the backups we are performing, SQL Server writes information in the error log. The backup has been succeed. The backup has been succeed. Okay. So, if you are having one or two databases, okay, it's okay, fine. But if you are having n number of databases, every time when you are taking the backup of the database, SQL Server write information in the SQL error log. That time means that me that makes the SQL Server error log to grow a little bit more. So to to suppress the error log, okay, to improve the to to inform to SQL error log, we are enabling three double two six trace file if you enable three double six trace file if the backups will success it won't write any information in the error log but if backup will fails if backup will fail that will write the information in the sql error log the best example is log shipping whenever you configure log shipping every transaction log backup it will write the information in the sql error log so your error log will grow like anything so i don't want write a successful backup information in the error log only fail information i need to write in the sql error log that time we need to enable 3226 trace file this is also a little bit more important whenever you see that your your error log is growing okay and i like same 2371 whenever the huge volume changes happen on the table the internal process automatically call the statistics so whenever you are performing inserts updates or deletes and lots a uh, big amount of modification you are performing internally internal internal process automatically call the statistics which we already discussed a lot okay so <clears throat> call the statistics to update all the changes during this time your query must wait to build a new execution plan okay in that scenario your query is still waiting waiting sometimes you will get the okay time mode while preparing the execution plan. To avoid this kind of stuff, the query need not wait for till the stats updated. The query need not wait for still stats to updated. It lets prepare the execution plan. To that, we are enabling the 
two three seven one trace file two three seven one trace file whenever you are performing huge uh, um, operations like transactions whenever you are performing that is leading some performance then you can enable two three seven one trace file and you can perform your huge transaction on your instance level like same one two zero four one three bill two trace file if you wanted to uh, write the deadlock information in the sql error log so if you wanted to write the information in the sql error log we can enable one two zero four one three bill two trace file as well one two three uh, one two zero four one three bill two one three bill two will write the xml format in the error log deadlock information but one two zero four will write the text format in the error log so instead of enabling these trace files we can also use the extended events by default the extend system health, health check extended events is running we can use the extended events to get the deadlock xml report that is also one of the best choice like uh, so if we can enable 3605 sending the sql error log error messages to the windows application event log instead of sql error log so if 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 sql related error information it wanted to write the in the application event viewer log okay instead of sql error log you can also enable the 3608 and uh, trace file 4010 enable the query optimizer debugging so if you wanted to uh, opt debug the query to while you are while you are troubleshooting the performance tuning of the query you can enable 4010 trace file so that it's enable the query optimizer debugging so that it will help us lot to troubleshoot the query tuning specially and uh, uh, 4199 enable the large query optimizer features to be not be enabled by default so latest sorry if if enable the latest query optimizer features so if you want to do uh, <clears throat> If if you are changing the uh, compatibility level, but I wanted to get the latest uh, uh, query optimizer features, even if your compatible level is a little bit lower, then I can enable four one double nine and and four six one six logs to be default in the full text in the SQL error log. If you enable the full text catalog and if you wanted to write the information in the SQL error log, you can enable four six one six like like. we are having n number of like for example if you wanted to enable the uh, large page memory model locked page memory model before sql server 2012 like uh, uh, sql server 2005 2000 2008 2008 r2 we need to enable the trace file 845 845 uh this is also little bit more important and if you want to do any if you want to use the old cardinality estimation then you can enable 4 uh, 4 uh, 9481 trace file like a query hint so we need to pass the query hint like a trace file which will help us log to use the old cardinality estimation and if you want to use the new cardinality estimation okay then you can pass 2312 trace file and one more very important trace file is 9 Zero two, nine zero two. This is this trace file is also a little bit very important. Sometimes whenever you are applying the patches, so whenever you are applying the patches, after you apply the patches and and you restarted the server and you are trying to bring the SQL services, sometimes your SQL services won't start due to the uh, due to the services went to upgrade mode failed. so it is not able to upgrade automatically so that time we need to enable the server into into um, script upgrade mode and and enable by enabling the trace file t hyphen 902 and manually we need to connect to the server and we need to fix the issue again we need to remove this trace file from the startup parameters this is also very important we are going to discuss uh, in the over the live sessions hyphen t 902 whenever your services went to upgrade mode and 3608 if you want to do uh, inform to sql server don't run the recovery phase for any other database except master database then we can enable 3608 trace file whenever you are starting sql services like same we are having n number of trace files okay so i will add this url into our description go and get this one so there are too many trace files are available each trace files are doing respect to work that will help us lot when we are troubleshooting so on so activity i hope this video help help us lot how to enable the trace files how to see the trace files even you can 
you can right click on the uh, server go to the reports go to the standard go to the uh, uh, server dashboard under server dashboard non default configuration options you can see what trace files currently enable and what trace files are currently running even you, you can run dbcc trace uh, trace status or you can go to the server dashboard where you can get the how many traces currently running in the my mission so each trace having some unique feature so whenever you are troubleshooting queries whenever you are troubleshooting tam db whenever you are troubleshooting deadlocks whenever you are troubleshooting uh, the sql services not starting using upgrade mode and if you wanted to start sql with the minimal mode in respect to trace files will help us a lot so i hope this video help you a lot so better go to that microsoft block and and try to start seeing what are the trace files which you are working on your day to day that's that's are so important and so on so activity yeah hope hope thanks for uh, watching this video and uh, uh, hope that will video is help help you a lot please subscribe my channel and click the bell icon for more videos thank you